Hey everyone, today we'll be attempting to set up a fully off-grid indoor grow setup. This project started when I saw this solar panel and battery system during a 4th of July sale, which included a 1000 watt battery and a two 100 watt portable solar panels for like $800 plus tax. <sighs> but yeah, it got me wondering if I could use the generated energy to power an entire indoor grow with, which by the way, the short answer is yes it can, but I'll save that for the full grow log. For now, let's just go over how I got this to work. I first placed the solar panels on the roof facing south because that's how you generate the most energy during the day. Wired everything through the window screen into the house and finally plugged it into the 1000 watt battery. From a couple of days of testing, it seems like I'm generating about 1000 to 1500 watts a day, starting from around 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. But as we get closer to the fall and winter months, I'm guessing it's going to go down to about 1000 watts a day or less. So we have to make sure that whatever grow space we use can work within these constraints. And here's where my handy DIY grow cabinet comes in. As it's quite energy efficient with the ion beam grow lights, air tightened exhaust fan, USB magnetic clip fan, and controller powering everything. Utilizing less than 50 watts during the vegetative stage and 80 watts during the flowering stage if I crank up the lights. A quick calculation shows that at 50 watts on for 18 hours a day, the vegetative stage only uses about 900 watts a day total. And at 80 watts on for 12 hours a day, the flowering stage utilizes about 960 watts a day both of which should be below the amount of power I generate each day. In practice though, this didn't turn out to be the case. And I guess now's the time to explain everything that I would change about this build, now that I'm a couple months in. So first, the solar panels. These aren't waterproof, which I didn't realize until after I got them. I mean, shouldn't all solar panels be waterproof? And these are one of the most popular portable solar panels on the market. So, I don't know. It rained for like two days last month. And I had to take these off the roof to prevent them from getting water damage. The good news is that there's a bunch of waterproof portable solar panels for way cheaper. So if you're looking to copy what I'm doing, be sure to choose a waterproof panel. The battery on the other hand worked great. But the problem here is that it just doesn't hold enough wattage. I originally figured that as long as I was running my devices mainly during the day, it will barely have to run on battery power and only when the sun goes down for a couple of hours, which means that I should never get too low. However, I never considered that the system might just not generate any energy, like for the two days that it rained. And to keep in the spirit of completely staying off grid, what I had to do was to dim the lights down to the lowest setting for these two days until I was able to get the panels back up. The rain wasn't the only issue, however, as there was a week where every day was super gloomy, which meant that I only generated like 500 watts a day. And again, during this long stretch, I had to dim my lights down as well to stay completely off grid. So I think having a two kilowatt battery, which is double my current battery size, would have helped a lot in covering these gaps. And having the battery have some sort of app feature would have saved me a lot of trouble as well, since without a way to wirelessly monitor the battery status, I had to check on it pretty much every day. Other than that, the system worked exactly how I thought it would. But the final thing I want to mention is that even though I'm doing this off-grid, 
I'm basically doing it in perfect indoor conditions so that I don't need to use electricity to run things like an AC or heater. It's sort of a cop-out, but I wanted to start small before trying out something crazier, like powering a full shed with a much larger battery and solar panel system. But after this test, I think it's doable and is something I might try to build in the near future. So yeah, with better solar panels and maybe even more solar panels paired with at least a two kilowatt battery, you too can grow a single cannabis plant indoors. After this first grow, I'm going to be tweaking the system around a little bit to figure out something a little more optimal. And until then, that's it.